This chair is the healing chair. So sometime during the day, every one of you can come up and sit here. You're all healers. You have your own technique. Some of you do laying on of hands or working with auras or whatever you do, okay? So when somebody is here, healers come and do your thing, okay? I'll maybe talking or something else, but don't worry about that. Just do your thing uh, up here. So, and uh, <clears throat> the speaker's chair is also a healer's chair. So if anybody feels like working on the speaker. Okay, everybody got your uh, notebooks? Uh, is there a little card there on the right side that says life is the only game? in which the object of the game is to learn the rules. That is true. Very, very true. The shortcut, everybody wants the shortcut to awareness, shortcut to awakening. No, that's not what we want. What we want is for the pressure to be off. We want life to be okay. And that's our motivation, okay? Now that's good. People think, no, I should be seeking God or something. No, people don't do that. People just want the pressure to be off. They're looking for improvement in their life. They want something to be better than it has been, okay? Now for me, <clears throat> The answers to all that are with the master teachers. And there have been master teachers forever. Now, most religions emphasize one master teacher over another, but it doesn't matter whether you follow Abraham or Lao Tzu or whatever you follow, or you're a Taoist or whatever, Moses, you know. They all said the same thing. They all had their own way of saying it, but they all said the same thing. So, you know, you can follow one of them or you can say, my inner guidance is my teacher. I just follow my inner guidance, okay? Actually, anything works because actually everybody makes it. Nobody gets left out. But the tricky part is how long does it take? We want the shortcut. We don't want to do 10,000 more lives of struggle and everything being an uphill climb and that sort of thing. So we're looking for the shortcut. So the shortcut comes from understanding basic, now I hate to say concepts because concepts are really of the ego. Concepts are ways that we reduce things from the infinite down to a few words and we want the infinite. But if we keep it simple, get it down to a few words, a few concepts, a few insights that we have, that tends to keep the ego out of the way. Now, it, it is for me a very real process of keeping the ego in its proper place. I've said several times, the ego's not bad. You don't want to get rid of the ego. You can't function in this reality. Uh, is this a reality? You can't function in three-dimension time space without the use of your logical mind. And your logical mind is your ego. Your logical mind looks and learns from its environment, from experience, and says, this is the way you do things. I was taught by that teacher. I learned because I got in trouble over here and my way out was to do this. So our logical mind says I have the answers. So one of the very first steps to awakening is to say, nothing I have ever believed about how to get free was right. Okay? The ego believes we are separate. So there's a basic impediment to 
awakening because we are not separate. So we have to shift everything we believe in. We have to be willing to allow our belief system, the old one to fall away, a new one to replace it. Okay. I just always go back to whoever my favorite master teacher is at the moment. And what did they say? What did they not say? You know, they never said this is going to be tough. You know, this is going to be hard. I've got to figure this out. They never did any of that. They went direct to the answer. We don't go to the answer. We go to something we think will bring us the answer. If I attend that class, if I study with that guru, if I do this, if I do that, if I do that, that'll get me where I want to go. It can be a fun trip, and there can be some steps that we take by doing that, some insights that we get, some of which are probably mandatory for our path based on our own history that we go clear out. We thought that person for 20 lives would have the answers for me, so I need to go sit with that person and find out they don't have the answer for me. You know, it's a little tricky to see why we're doing what we're doing uh, in life. But we want to focus on shortcuts. Shortcuts say be aware when the steps in your life have an agenda. Be aware. Thank you, Nathan. You're welcome, Be aware when it looks complex. These are just little warning signs, okay? If it looks complex, if it feels like a no-win situation, it's time to sit down, shut up, follow your breath, let the inner guidance solve the problem for you. Okay. I, Sai Baba is one of my, been one of my mentors for a long, long time. There's a number of Eastern masters that I thoroughly enjoy, their approach. And I borrow that phrase from Sai Baba. You go to see Sai Baba and you say, Sai Baba, I have the problem. I, I, I need answers. Help me. And he says, Sit down, shut up, and follow your breath. But you don't understand. Baba, I have a real problem here. I know, I know. Sit down, shut up, and follow your breath. Okay? And we argue with Baba. This is not the way, you know, I need answers. You don't understand the practical world. I, I understand, I know. You can solve every problem in your life quickly and easily. Here's how. Sit down, shut up, and follow your breath. I'll get back to you in about 20 years and everything will be okay. That goes against the logical mind, right? The average human being on this planet is not aware of what they are thinking. They don't believe that thoughts have any reality at all. They don't think that thoughts have any relationship to creation. They're trained by the world. You get out there and you do it. You work hard if you want something to happen. And the master teachers have said, well, work hard if you want to, it doesn't matter. You know, it won't hurt anything but it's all about consciousness. It's all about mind. Now, in our next workshop that we do, we tell you there is no mind, but we won't go there this time, okay? This time it's, it's all about mind, okay? There's always another step. However far you get, there's, there's an infinite number of steps. All the master teachers tell me they're still learning. They're still expanding. You know, they mastered third dimension time space, sure. But they're working on 51st dimension time space or something like that. I, I can't comprehend all that stuff, you know, but it goes on forever. And of course, that's a lie because forever implies time and there is no time. So, you know, we want to start off by saying I don't know anything. 
The ego defends its belief system, always defends its belief system. You challenge my beliefs, I'm going to stand up for what I believe. Does what you believe make you happy? No, but I'm going to defend it, right? It's, it's all I've got. It's what I hang on to. I was taught by my parents, by authority figures. This is what I should believe. So that's worth hanging on to. All righty. We'll wait. We'll get back to you next lifetime. See if you still feel that way. Okay. What if you want this lifetime to be your last lifetime? Or your last mandatory. You can always come back as a volunteer. Come back as a master teacher. But what if you want this one to be the last mandatory lifetime? It's an inside job. It's an inside job. It's just what you do from following guidance. Now, following guidance has two functions, I say, which is, again, not true. There's no duality. Duality is something we make up to explain good and bad, right and wrong, up and down on this planet. But guidance gives you two things. It gives you your service to yourself and to humanity. There's something that you are uniquely good at that nobody else on this planet is as good at as you because you have a unique history. You've learned things that other people haven't learned. The ego always steps in and says, well, what I would teach, nobody cares about. Nobody wants to hear or whatever, you know. The ego is going to do everything it can to keep you from getting enlightened. Ego does not want to die. So it's going to do everything it can to keep you from getting enlightened. But you do have a unique thing, one or more things, that you can do that is your mission, that is your purpose, that is your service, that nobody else can do as well as you can. So that's part of guidance. It's going to keep taking you there. You'll keep resisting, perhaps, but it'll keep trying to take you there. The second thing it tries to do, the guidance tries to do, is remove the stumbling blocks from your path. Now, you can call those stumbling blocks anything you want, karmic debts, you know, any, any way you want to refer to them. But they're just things that you believed in error that if you shift your belief about them, they dissolve. Okay? There's no need to pay a karmic debt. There's no need to undo what you did that you thought was not right. There's just get the proper insight. Get the proper insight and you discover, I never did anything wrong. Nobody's ever done anything wrong. I'm not guilty of anything. Nobody's guilty of anything. Would the universe allow guilt? It doesn't allow guilt any more than it allows leukemia or disasters. Hmm, that requires a shift in our perception to see that, okay? All master teachers have been calm no matter what they were faced with. Here's a huge disaster. Everybody's praying to the master, help me, help me, help me. Does the master come in all, oh God, we gotta do this and we gotta do that. There is nothing that ruffles the mind of a master teacher. They know the truth. Master teachers have all healed by knowing that everything was okay just the way it is. Everything is okay just the way it is. Still need the mental shelf, right? Still have some ideas we need to store up there until they get a little more comfortable. Start off with, what words do people like? I, I, I'm not real good at using the word God. I, I tend to use source or creator or universe. Universe I use more than anything else, I guess. But if the universe is love, what does that exclude? 
anything that's not love. That excludes disaster, tragedy, harm, wrong, right? Can't be love and harm in the same universe. They're mutually exclusive. So, we're getting where we want to start with, okay? I see boggled minds. I see people saying, wait a minute. That's perfect. That's the starting place. That's where we go to begin to shift our old belief system. And you can feel yourself defending your old belief system, right? There is right and wrong. There is good and bad. There is tragedy. Okay, go ahead and defend it until you get tired of defending it. Now, there's two situations here. One, when we're sitting in a class talking theoretically, which is what this feels like. Another, when you're the one out there in the tornado in Oklahoma City, right? Now, how do we maintain this consciousness when we're in the middle of the tornado? Okay. We just do the best we can. But in those moments when we see that God has not gone away, the universe has not shifted from love to something else, you will see miracles happen in front of you right there. Okay. I was just going to ask, um, I found that in all the trials I've been through, that there was a reason for it, because they were doing something good. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. In retrospect, we see what that did for me, right? Who are the greatest teachers on the planet? Who are the ones who have the books out there, who have the workshops, who have the... The, the TV shows and all of that, the ones who went through the tragedy. You know, it just kind of dawned on me one day, in Alcoholics Anonymous, everyone gets a mentor, and your mentor was an alcoholic. Now, how could an alcoholic relate to somebody who'd never been an alcoholic? How could they think, you can't help me. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what it's like when you can't stop. You know, you don't know what addiction is about. You've never done that. So when you went through abuse, tragedy, alcoholism, addiction, whatever you went through, that was the course you took to become the teacher, the healer in that area. But you learn that in retrospect. You don't learn that while you're going through it. You know, we would never put somebody through those things saying, oh, this is for your good. You're going to become a healer in this area, right? But our contract with the earth, our plan for our life, and everything that's ever happened to any human being is written in their contract with life on earth. You fill out a contract and sign it before you incarnate, and it's all in there. I want to be a healer in this area, therefore I'm going to go through this. Well, it's not just to become a healer in that area, it's to clear your own karma in that area, meaning your own belief system that says, I did something wrong in this area. Karma has no reality other than in your mind, other than you believe you're guilty of not have, having proper behavior sometime back there. And because you believe that, the universe says, well, we got to figure out a way to remove that belief from your mind. Oh, okay, well, you think if you pay your debt, you'll be free of the guilt. All right, well, that works. That's the way most people do it. That is the karmic path. Pay your debt to get free of your guilt is what karma is all about. There's a better way. <laughs> Why go through all that? Even if it's an illusion, you know, it's a dream. When you wake up from the dream, you say, oh, whew, that was only a dream. You know. Now, I, I find it interesting. People say, I would never do that. Well, what movie did you go see last week? Oh, the, the treachery of the demons of the deep of the whatever, right? We'd love to have the hell scared out of us. So we buy, pay 10, 15 bucks to go see a, a, a movie that will leave us terrified. But we know that when the house lights come on, we can say, 
That was just a movie. Hey, pretty good flick, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's what life is. And that doesn't mean when your neighbor's house burns down, you go over and say, well, it was your thoughts that created your house burning down. Let's examine your thoughts and see where your burning thoughts are. You know, that's just not helpful. <laughs> you know, helpful the ego thinks it can solve people's problems and find answers for people. The ego can't do that. You want to help somebody, what do you do? Be there. Just be there. Right? If they need to spew out something about how bad it was, just be there. Let them spew. Right? If you're trying to tell them that their way of thinking is incorrect, that brings up every defense mechanism they have. They're going to defend whatever they've been saying, defend their belief, defend their guilt, defend their belief they've been harmed. You know, the way around that is just be there for them. You know, nobody resists hugs, right? Just be there. Just hold hands, something. All correction belongs to the spirit realm, not to the ego realm. All correction belongs to the spirit realm. All correction belongs to the spirit realm. Now you can be a facilitator for that correction by being there. Not by trying to tell them what they did wrong, but by being there. As they calm down, the spirit realm comes in and works with their mind. We don't do the healing. You wouldn't know how to heal anything. You don't. Mm -mm. If you're good at your healing technique, the greatest value you have while you're performing a healing is be there. Be real, be love, be present. You, everybody is a channel. Everybody's a slightly different form of channel. But when you're doing your healing work, it is the fact that you are a channel for the healing that does the healing. It's not your mind, it's not your belief system, it's nothing you can do. It's not that you had your hands in the right place at the right time. If you're following guidance, your hands will be in the right place at the right time. You just be open to the inspiration and guidance of the spirit realm and you are used as a channel and the spirit realm flows through you and does the healing. Jesus said, of myself, I can do nothing. It's the Father within that does the works. That's true for all of us. We cannot do anything. We don't even know why we're here. We don't know anything about life. We don't know what anybody needs. We don't know anything. Big sign on the refrigerator, I know nothing. And that opens you up to learn the next step. It's an ego battle. Ego wants to defend. We were taught your self-worth comes from what you know. Your self-worth comes from being right, from winning the argument. Got to let go of that self-worth. You have self-worth for one reason and one reason only. You are a child of God. Can't do any better than that. That's the only reason you have self-worth. That's who you are. Nothing to do with how smart you are, what you know, how educated you are, how many arguments you've won. You're just you. Ah, well, it takes the pressure off, really, if you stop and think about it. When you have to have the right answer and you have to be right and you have to win the argument, that's a lot of pressure. That exhausts us. That wears us out quickly. But if I'm just me, 
And I didn't even create me. The universe created me. I, I'm not guilty of anything. I didn't do anything right or wrong. I'm just me. Boy, that's an easy path. Ah. You know you're following guidance when you feel relaxed. And as time goes by, you'll feel relaxed in what used to be pressure situations, what used to be angry people, whatever. I'm just me. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Oop, boy, the ego jumped in there, didn't they? Nothing matters. Yeah. What if you've done something wrong, you know, morally wrong, or society tells you it's wrong, and you may have hurt someone, you know, directly or indirectly, and you may feel guilt or remorse or something. Where does that play into this? It's a step-by-step -step process, okay? Now, we could jump to the ultimate conclusion, but that doesn't register with us. We can say there is no wrong. You can't hurt anybody, you know, which is very true. But we want to take the steps necessary to let that sink into our awareness, okay? Oh, there's so many ways you can approach that. You and the other people, whoever was involved, are the same person. You just hurt yourself. But where does all hurt take place? In your mind. You think you did this. You saw that. Everything happens in here. Okay. So two people can say the same thing to somebody and one of them feel, I did harm, I feel regret, I feel guilty, and the other ones would be thinking, I did nothing wrong. You know, that was fine. It's a personal judgment. Everything we did wrong is a personal judgment. It's a judgment of ourself. It's not an absolute right or wrong. There is no absolute right or wrong. Okay. So whatever metaphors, allegories work for you, okay, Allegory number one, everybody enrolled for every experience they have because it would assist them in their growth. So if you did something to somebody and they tell you you made them feel bad, you can say, well, that's part of your growth. Now, that doesn't sound very compassionate, but, <laughs> but it's true. It's true. There are no victims. Nobody was unfairly treated. The universe is love, and love does not allow unfair treatment. Got to come around to love is perfect. You know, love has all the answers. But if you, if there's no right or wrong, why are there societal rules about you must do this, you must do this, you must do that, you must do this? Otherwise, it would be a free for all, wouldn't it? Yeah, it starts, it starts out that way. Oh, well, let's, let's uh, go back to why we're here. Why would anybody enroll in planet Earth? Why, why do we feel separate from everybody? Why do we have struggle and pain? I just make up stories. You know, I've never told the truth in my life. I just make up stories, okay, so whatever. This is so far beyond anything I can comprehend, you know. In the beginning, God. When I was a, uh, a kid, I don't know, 10 or 12 or something, I was at a summer camp and they had, a, they had little plays. And I got to be the, I was the narrator. I was not on stage, but I was giving the point of view of God, I guess, or the universe or something. Anyway, I remember saying, and God was lonely, so God created man. Well, 
what nonsense, God lonely, you know, God missing something, whatever. But for some reason, individualizations of God were created. I can't tell you why. And there is no individualization other than in our mind. So God, I don't know, you've got better stories than I do probably. You could make up better stories about the beginning of everything. I don't know. So here's God. God breaks off individualizations of the self so that God can know itself from another point of view. Is that totally ridiculous? I have no idea. So we're individualized, but we're still God. So God says, well, but nothing has changed. You're still God. You know you're God. You know, you're still me. I, I can't see you as you because you're individualized, but you're still made of me. Okay, well, let's give you amnesia. You forget me, God, and work your way back to remembering me. Gets pretty deep, doesn't it? And in the process of working your way back to remembering me, you will pick up characteristics of the individual, which will make you different from the other individuals on the one hand, but you won't really be different because you'll still be me. I, I, I don't know. Anyway, so we start off as individuals trying to deal with other individuals with amnesia of who we really are. And so we start butting heads and wanting control and wanting power and wanting to acquire the infinite. And we only know how to do that a piece at a time. So it'll be a car here and a house there and a this or that, you know, as we go along. And I guess that all has benefit because the ultimate result is you're going to merge back into God. But the tricky part is you will not lose your individuality. You'll be the one, but you'll still have your individuality. So everything we're doing, looking like we're interacting in some way, is to create our unique individuality. It scares me when people write down my weird stories like this. <laughs> you can make up as good a story as I can about what this is all about. The metaphors like that help at all? I don't know. Yeah. You know, it, this is not reality. Nothing on planet Earth is what it appears to be. Somewhere along the way, we have to, even though we don't comprehend the truth, Somewhere along the way, we have to keep reminding ourselves of the truth. The universe is love, and love would not allow harm. Love would not allow me to make a mistake. Love would never allow me to harm another individual. You know, that's outside the realm of love. That can't happen. And I'm going to forget that 90% of the day and believe I'm interacting with a separate individual every time I talk to somebody, but I just remind myself as often as I can. <laughs>